Hey, good morning. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, along with Jeff Powie, my esteemed associate that has been continuously giving us great repairs for the last two or three years. I'm running him up because he's here. Anyways, if he wasn't around, I might be saying something bad. So if this video is helpful, please like, share, most of all, subscribe and share my videos. Hey, you know, I like making these videos for you guys. I want to share my knowledge, but subscribers are very very important to the two tenths of a cent i get every time somebody watches a video so i don't get it if you don't subscribe please do that for me if you want to reach out to me you can hit me up on facebook under clay's ac and auto repair my name's clay rogers with your if you got a question that needs to be answered immediately you know or you want some help with the project sometimes i can help sometimes i can't but i sure will try so hopefully this video is enjoyable thank you so much I'll continue. So what we're working on today is a 2006, uh, 2007 Mercury Mariner or Ford Escape, same darn thing, or Mazda Tribute, same thing. It's all going to be the same process. I'll probably post up a bunch of videos. First thing that we did was is we disconnected the positive battery cable. And the reason we did that is because we wanted to put the differential in neutral and have the transmission in neutral. Next thing we did was we lowered down the actual... Um, spare tire because that's going to allow us to get it out of the way to be able to get the pumpkin cover off we're going to take the pumpkin cover off undo the u-joints and then we'll go into the other steps it's going to take a bit so it's going to be a long video but uh we're going to try to make it for you guys so hopefully it makes it simpler for you and you don't run into the same problems we're going to run into jeff is going to give us a synopsis on why the rear end is bad in this thing so go ahead tell it to us jeff all right if you look back in here i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it with the phone see there's unusual wear marks right there on the tip of that gear and it should be a flat even pattern right there okay it's again the same thing over here you can't you get, see the shiny you know the shiny you know how they're shiny because they're yeah. not wearing properly on there and that should be one one old kind of an oval shape shiny pattern right in the middle and it's not it's got two distinctive patterns hmm. so that means so that's the, the reason that this rear differential is yep. bad. Rear end was shim shimmed wrong. Yep, from the wherever it came from. Wanted to go ahead and show you what, what he was talking about when he was talking about that oval shape. You can, can kind of see it in there, how the edges, it kind of meets in the middle. That means the shimming is correct and that you're good to go. We also matched up the numbers on the ring gears here just to make sure, because this one was sitting off to the side. I was fairly competent that they were the same. It's about a two, what'd you say, 298 gear ratio in the back of these? 292. 292, so, you know, hopefully that's good information okay, for so you. So, we are gonna first pop the half shafts out. Uh, what did you pull off, Jeff? He's pulled out the lower control arm bolts. We're gonna pull off this bolt here and we're gonna pull out the lower control arms and we're gonna unbolt the rear differential and the shaft shafts aren't gonna come out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pry them back and as we're pulling it back with these lower control arms off and down, that should give us enough room to spread it out. That means that you're gonna to have to put it in, you're gonna to have to put the half shafts in as you push it in. But we're gonna try this out. We'll show you that it works and show you any more that we need to show you if we have to. Okay, so I took my half shaft and I and or took my pry bar and I popped the half shafts loose. So they're loose there and I took this one and I went like this, got that one loose. Now we're gonna remove the three bolts that hold it on to this knuckle right here. So we pulled out our four 15 millimeter bolts here and our three back there on the brackets. We're gonna pull out these, I believe 19 millimeters uh, for the wings right here, so they're loose. You might not be able to get this one all the way out because of the gas tank, but shouldn't really be a problem. And we're gonna pry out the lower control arms so everything's all loose and ready to come okay, out. Okay, so the wing bolt was 21 millimeters. You're gonna have to take your jack and put it underneath the shock to be able to drop this down. Yeah, so go. we took this wing nut bolt out. We should be able to get this skated over this way and then out that way with the wing still in there. It was. Uh, I haven't tried to get another socket in there, but I had a shallow 21 on my half inch drive and I couldn't get in there. So we're gonna try it 
figured it out without taking that off. We'll let you know here in a minute what happened. So now that we got uh, the lower control arms out of the way, now we can pry the rear differential back further. And with that bracket off of there, as it comes back, the axles will come out. So that's gonna make it easier for us, hopefully. That's the hopes anyways. Okay, so what we're doing now is we got both axles popped out. We're lowering this down. Hopefully you got this high enough in your driveway. I'm assuming you're gonna be working on this in your driveway. Then this will come out. Once we get it lowered down, now of course, that means that we have to put the axles back in. I can't stress that enough before you go back up with this thing because you won't be able to get them in without taking off all the other stuff that the service manual tells you you have to take off. Okay, while we're installing this, now we installed our, our passenger side left first and how we installed that because the clips didn't wanna go back in is we gave it a couple tings right here. This is, this is heavy, strong aluminum, so you're gonna tap it like this and that's how we got that one in. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the right side. We're gonna tap it right here and then we'll be able to push the unit up in there and it'll pretty much be you know, all about the Benjamins after that. Okay, point. because we didn't take off one of the, um, the mounts on the front here, we didn't remove our mount right here that you can't see because i don't have any light but we didn't remove that mount right there we had to we had to pry this portion over to be able to get this to come forward and you'll notice that we still don't have our axles in our axle all the way in here we're going to install that right now but i must stress these axles have to be all the way in and flush i'll show you that okay. here in a moment because we improvised and did not remove the coil springs, the shocks, and the forward lateral arms, and all sorts of crap, we had to improvise more uh, urban engineering. So, very specifically, we needed to be at this point in the vehicle. We tried it here, didn't work. We tried it over here, didn't work. It needed to be right here to be able to square up the holes. Now, what this jack is for is to push that up so it goes like this just a little bit of urban engineering that's a clayism for you it's free okay it's all free stuff right here hopefully you subscribe and then uh then you'll learn neat words like urban engineering um we're going to do the same on the other side if there's any problems i'll explain them to you but you're more than likely going to put the strap not here for the other side, but here. Yay. So once I got it up and pretty much in position, you know, somewhat squarish, so you could start kind of putting the bolts and I wouldn't tighten them up just in case. I just was able to turn it with my hand and wiggle it and it popped right in, clipped in by hand. So that was great. I think uh, it's all about done here. So hopefully this video was helpful. Like I said, if you need to get a hold of me, send me an instant message on Facebook under Clay's AC and Auto Repair. Like my videos, share my videos, subscribe to my page. Don't be the next to them, be the first to you. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can too. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.